Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. And as you're turning there, I didn't want you to have to locate two passages of Scripture. It generally takes a little bit longer than we would like. I'll be reading to you out of 1 Peter chapter 2 as you're turning to Isaiah. And then I'll join you there in the book of Isaiah. 1 Peter 2 says this in verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness... And then Peter would say this, by whose stripes ye were healed. By whose stripes you were healed. Now he's talking to believers when he writes that. By whose stripes, past tense, something already accomplished, something already done, ye were healed. By whose Stripes And the word stripes is interesting. So oftentimes we have looked at it simply as the lictor's lash that was striking the back of Christ. But as you look at the word, it is not limited to that. The word stripe actually means a wheel or a bruise or a wound, a wound that is accomplished in war. So not just the lictor's lash that struck the body of our Lord, but when they pulled the beard from his face, when they wounded him by smiting him in the face, when they jammed the crown of thorns on his head and his head began to swell, when they pounded the nails, Through his hands and his feet, the wounds, the stripes, the bruises. He said, this is my body, which is broken for you by his stripes, by the wounds, by the Defilement of his physical body by men, ignited by the passion of demon sources and forces. So much so that Isaiah 52 and 13 says that he didn't even look like a man. Oh, not just the lictor's lash, my friend, but every wound representing what he did at Calvary. Not just, if, now think through this a moment, I don't mean to blow your theology out of the water, but I do. If he had just been whipped, you couldn't be saved. And the same event that saved you is the same event that can heal you. It was the laying down of his life. And as he traveled through that experience, he received the wounds, the stripes in his physical body. So that when we say by his stripes we are healed, we are referring to the event where the wounds took place, once again pointing us to the cross. Turn with me to Isaiah 53. You're there already, I'm not. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from Him. He was despised, and we esteemed Him not. Surely, surely, surely He hath borne our griefs. Mark that word, we're coming back to it. 
and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And I want to minister to you this morning for a few moments before we pray for the sick. The healing power of Jesus. The healing power of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to minister to these people and those listening today over the radio, through Sun Life Radio, through the Internet. We thank you for them. Lord, more than ever before, I need the presence of the preacher, the teacher, the person of the Holy Spirit to anoint me, to speak those words that are needful and necessary, that faith might rise. In the hearts of believers, that faith might rise, Lord, even in the hearts of unbelievers, that Jesus can heal. I'd ask you to open up the heart and give me the words in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. In the passages which we've just read, As you study scholar after scholar and itinerary after itinerary, booklet after booklet, thought after thought, there's a major common theme that we find running through the commentary on these passages. That in both traditional commentaries and charismatic commentaries, there is the acknowledgement that Christ died to heal us. The argument oftentimes stems around what did He die to heal us from? And some will come and say that Christ died to heal us simply from our sins. And boy, simply is a bad choice of words. Maybe I should say it this way. That He died only to save us from our sins. To to save us from the ravages of a sin-sick soul. And certainly you and I would have to agree that above all the things that man needs, the sin problem is the premier situation that must be resolved so that we can have a relationship with God. And the events both in Peter and the passages in 1 Peter that I read, and as well the passage in Isaiah, is easily formed and easily understood to be read and looked at and designed for us to acknowledge that surely there would be a Redeemer who would save us from our sin. And He would do it through the sacrifice of Himself. But one thing that we need to begin to understand and grasp if we're truly going to operate as soldiers of the cross and we're going to operate in the book of Acts and we're going to see great things happen in the kingdom is that God died to save us from our sins and that is the premier event. Never put anything in front of that. Someone shout Amen. But what we must also understand is the great word sozo in the Greek for salvation means that He came to make man whole. So that everything that we lost in the fall could be restored to us. Listen, He didn't just die, and oh, I want to be careful, and I think I've qualified. He didn't just die so that we didn't have to go to hell. He died so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. He died to bring everything back to us that Adam and Eve lost for us in the fall. 
There was no sickness in the garden. There was no death in the garden. There was, prior to the fall, no sin nature to deal with. What Jesus did for us at Calvary was accomplish that process by which all of us could be made 100% whole, that salvation would come and bring to us the wholeness that God designed for us. Now, we struggle sometimes with the idea of healing, but as we study the Word of God, we should begin to realize that the sacrifice of Christ includes the healing for the physical frame. And let me begin to give you just a little evidence for you this morning. In the word in verse 4 of Isaiah 53, the Bible says, Surely He has borne our griefs. The idea of born means that he's placed something on himself. He has taken it upon himself and carried it away. What was it that Jesus put upon himself and took away? Well, one might say sin, and that certainly is correct. We understand the sin concept, but this word throws a little trouble on that concept of just exclusively sin because this word in the in the in the hebrew indicates this it is a malady it means a sickness it means a disease it's 24 times in the bible this is translated and it's translated as sickness it's translated as disease, it's translated as grief, and it's translated as sick. It has no association with sin at all. So the word grief deals exclusively and explicitly with the healing of the physical frame, with sickness and malady in the physical frame. It deals exclusively with God's, get this, with God's desire to heal your physical body as a part of the atonement that Jesus would give His life to accomplish. The Word says it. If I'm making it up, don't believe me. But if the Word says it, then you need to reach out by faith and grab a hold of it. Surely He has borne our griefs. Well, does the Bible say anything about this at all in other passages of Scripture? Certainly the same word. Listen to this in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 15 says this, And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Same word as grief. The Lord, speaking in Deuteronomy 7, 15, The Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Again, this word griefs is never used to describe sin. And in Matthew chapter 8, when Peter's mother-in-law is healed, I think, I'm sorry, that's Matthew chapter Matthew, yeah, Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 or 17. Matthew, led by the Holy Ghost, draws on Isaiah 54 and describes the healing of the mother-in-law by quoting Isaiah 53 and verse 4. So commentary from the New Testament tells us that Bearing our griefs is specifically talking about God healing our physical body. Commentary on the Bible. The Holy Ghost said that Peter's mother-in-law was healed and he quoted Isaiah 53 and verse 4 saying that this is a fulfillment of that. This healing of the physical body is a fulfillment of that. So again, the evidence in the Old Testament tells us that it was a plan of God to come and move through the physical frame of the, of the body and bring healing to the body. Other evidences in, Psalm, in, in the Old Testament, Psalm 103 in verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of His benefits. I don't know what it is, but I feel that some of us are scared to accept the benefit of healing. 
There's a, a lack of faith. And the reason there's a lack of faith is there's a lack of honest preaching in regard to healing. Healing is never to bring glory to a man or a ministry, only to a message and a Savior. Healing isn't supposed to bring you into a love affair with a ministry or a man, but in a love affair with a Savior who died on Calvary's cross to bring you the healing in your physical frame that you need. But in today's Pentecostal world, we don't see messages. We don't hear messages about healing. And if we don't preach on healing as ministers of the gospel, then there's no faith to believe God for healing. We've got to get back to preaching that Jesus saves, Jesus heals, Jesus heals, Jesus heals, Jesus heals, Jesus. Let me preach over here. Jesus heals, Jesus heals. That Pentecostal, Spirit-led, Spirit-filled men of God who understand the cross of Christ say, Jesus still heals. If we don't preach it, there will not be faith in the body of Christ to receive it. But we've backed up from it because it's out of our control. Man, if what if we preach it and nobody gets healed? Preach it anyway. Preach it anyway. What if you preach the truth and nobody got saved? Would you stop? What if you preached it and nobody got baptized in the Holy Ghost? Would you stop? Well, I hope not. What if you... Why aren't you preaching that Jesus heals? Because we're afraid and we're embarrassed and we're not ministers operating in faith. We're nervous. They'll laugh at us. They'll they'll regard us as stupid. What if He doesn't do it? Oh, that's faith. But I know the struggle. I'm a preacher. When God laid this on my heart last week to preach, I thought, oh, Jesus. Hello? Because I can't heal you. No person in the building can heal you. No person in the building can save you. No person in the building can baptize you in the Holy Ghost. But last night, I found out that Jesus must have been in the building because I saw people fill. Came through speaking in other tongues. And if Jesus is in the building to baptize you with the Holy Ghost, Jesus is also in the building to heal your physical body. He desires to do that for us. He desires to do that for us. Well, Brother Larson, I don't know all that I know about healing. I don't either, but I know what it says in His Word. Not to forget His benefits. Not to forget His benefits. Well, what are those benefits? Psalm 103 tells us. Don't forget my benefits. What's that? Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. These are the benefits gained by what Jesus did for us at Calvary. You can't gain them just by getting a couple verses and quoting and quoting and quoting and quoting. If you get a healing from God, it's not because of you, it's because of Him. It's not because of the preacher, it's because of Him. The Bible says that the prayer of faith shall save the sick. But as I studied it out this week, I realized that in the Greek language, there's a definite article in front of the word faith. The prayer of the faith. When you pray for somebody today, and you're going to help me in a few minutes' time, don't you pray thinking, oh, oh, you pray this way. You pray the prayer of faith. You know that what Jesus did for that person at Calvary is sufficient. 
to bring healing to their physical frame. That's the prayer of the faith. I don't get healing because I confess it. I don't get healing because some man lays hands on me. I get healing because of what Jesus did at Calvary. That's the prayer of the faith. Emphasis is not on us. It's on Him. It's on who it was, who He was, and what He did. The prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise them up. Hallelujah! 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 Don't forget it! Don't forget it! Don't forget it! Don't forget it! He'll deliver you from your iniquities. He'll heal you of all your diseases. Don't forget it! Don't forget it. Come on, someone help me in here. You say, well, I'm struggling to believe. Let your heart reach out. Look at the Word. Listen to what I'm saying. Let your heart reach out. I can't make you believe. All I can do is preach to you. I can't heal you. All I can do is tell you what the Word says. By faith, we get what we need from heaven. And the same faith that saves you brings you the benefit of healing. That's why that is tied together over and over and over again in the Scriptures. It's not an either or. Well, did He save me just so I don't go to hell? Or did He heal my body? It's not an either or. It's both. The same simple faith that you exhibited to get saved can cause healing to come. He doesn't require anything else. You don't have to sit in a seminar on healing and listen for 45 hours to somebody talk about healing. You don't have to do that. Oh, thank you. All you have to do, would you give me my water right there? All you have to do is know that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary to bring healing to your physical frame and reach out by faith and receive it. You don't have to quote a million scriptures because in your mind that's not the prayer of faith. That's works. Faith comes. How did you get saved when somebody told you that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary and something on the inside of you went, hmm, oh yeah. All of a sudden, you knew that 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 that He was the Savior and that He died for your sins. And something, because somebody preached it to you, rose up into your heart and you reached out and you grabbed a hold of it and you made it your own. And faith for healing is the same. We can't make it happen. But we need to be around preachers who don't throw the emphasis, if they preach healing at all, who don't throw emphasis on what you do. But they throw the emphasis on what He has already done. Otherwise, it's not going to be healing. It's not going to be effective. Because it's no longer scriptural. It's no longer biblical. It's no longer by faith and grace. Instead, it's become a work. So if we get anything, when we get it today, it won't be because of any of us. It'll all be because of Him. It'll all be because of... Forget not any of His benefits. Uh, Exodus 15 and 26, He said, If thou wilt diligently, speaking to the children of Israel, hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do what is right in His sight, and will give ear to His commandments, and keep all His statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord. And it's not talking specifically about sin here. It's talking specifically about maladies, physical infirmities, and diseases. I am, listen to it, I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord. This is God speaking to you and I. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Well, he said I had to keep the covenant. Oh, i got to keep all the... Don't you know how to keep covenant under the new covenant? Father, I believe in who Jesus is and what Jesus has done. (laughs) There you go. Get rid of your list. 
Get rid of your rules. Well, I have to do so many things to get my healing. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That 2,000 years ago when He gave up His body, that was His body that was broken for me. That healing can be mine because of that. And you're keeping covenant. God sees you as righteous. You become a law keeper because you're in Him. And the benefit of healing can be yours. Not because you were so good. Not because you said all the right things. Not because you acted just wonderful. But because God has decreed that to make the human being whole, healing should be available. And we reach out only by faith. And our faith has to be in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And then He is to us what He promised, I am the Lord that healeth thee. Don't you hear the heartbeat of God? I want to heal. Don't you see it in the Word? I want to heal. Not just sin, physical sickness. Don't you see it in these little passages we're reading today? Don't you feel it? Don't you grasp it? Don't you grab a hold of this? God wants to heal His body. In Malachi chapter 4, He said this, But unto you that fear My name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. 400 years left on the countdown before the Master would appear, even though it would only be in a lowly stable. But the last prophet of the Old Covenant, nearly in the last verse of the whole covenant, said, guess what? What Isaiah prophesied about, what David prophesied about, what all the Old Testament, what Moses prophesied about, he's almost here. He's almost here. And when the Son of Righteousness rises, he's coming with... Healing in His wings. In the New Testament, let's take a look for a moment at the life of Jesus. When He comes on the scene, He doesn't come just preaching repent for the kingdom of heaven that is at hand. He does. That's the premier message. Again, dealing with sin. But the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, in Jesus' beginning of His ministry, that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. In Matthew 9, in verse 35, it says, And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease. Every sickness and every disease. AIDS can't stand in His way. Cancer can't stand in His way. No disease that man or devils have ever encountered could ever stand in the way of the Master Healer. He's still able to heal. And He came with healing in His wings, in His own ministry. Who could forget blind Bartimaeus? But yet we forget, and thus we forget His benefits. Oh, that was good for then, but... I wish Jesus was here now. Who could forget the little woman who pressed through and touched the hem of His garment so none of the physicians could do anything for her and she just got this in her spirit. If I could just get out of the way. Hey, get out, you big Jew. Get out of the way. Ah, got it. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten that He healed people who would reach out by faith and He didn't even know He'd done it until virtue flowed out of His body? That's how willing God is to heal. And then He sends His disciples out. Teach, preach, cleanse the leper. 
AIDS don't have nothing on leprosy. Lepers made whole. Wham! Bam! Because of Jesus. The healing power of Jesus. Ten of them at once. No limit to this. The healing, I'm talking about the healing power of Jesus, not the healing power of men, not the healing power of a location, not the healing power of a, a mantra or a method, the healing power of a person, the Lord Jesus. Have we forgotten His work? Have we forgotten that He exhibited to us in His earthly ministry what it would be like when he was here all the time in the millennial. Well, it all faded away when Jesus died. No, it didn't. It multiplied. It didn't fade away. It multiplied. What do you mean? He told his disciples in John. He said, verily, verily. You know what verily, verily means? It's a double assurance that what I'm about to say is truth, and I double dog dare you to deny it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth in me will do the works that I do. He that believeth on me will do the work he and he's talking to his disciples about leaving, passing the baton on. He says, He, come on, someone help me in here. He that he that what? Well, you go through the list, you get, you know, the word of faith doctrine, and you, and you quote it 25. He that believeth on me, who I am and what I've done, he that believeth on me shall do the works that I do, and even greater works. Not greater in quality. Nothing could be greater than the quality of raising Lazarus from the dead or rising from the dead yourself. But greater in quantity. The reason why healing shouldn't have died out in the church at any time is that Jesus died. He ascended up to the heavenlies and sent gifts back down to men to confirm the truth that He died at Calvary not just for sin but for sickness and disease. But the problem is in us, we've stopped believing. This isn't a fairy tale. This isn't Peter Pan, give me some pixie dust. This is the reality of making human bodies whole. Reality. It's not a fable. It's a reality. Jesus died so that He could send back the power of the Holy Ghost. And as the Holy Ghost moved through Him, it now not just limited to Him. That's why the works are greater. It can now flow through each one of us. It's not our power. It's His. It's not us. It's Him. But now the works are greater because in quantity it can be spread through every believer. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall... Have we forgotten His benefits? When was the last time we laid hands on a spouse before we called the doctor? I'm not fussing at you. I'm just asking. Well, could I call a doctor? Sure, call a doctor all you want. But why don't you lay hands on him first? Say, God, guide me. Help me. I'm not trying to teach you not to use medical assistance. That's stupid. If I felt that way, y'all ought to be riding donkeys instead of driving cars. Isn't it the same principle? I want you to believe first. I want you to exercise your faith first. Exactly. Brother said, help mine unbelief. And you know what? The beauty of this is, in a few minutes when we pray for you to receive healing, you don't you don't even have to have all your I's dotted and your T's crossed. You say, well, I'm struggling to believe. Well, tell him that. And just say, Lord, then help my unbelief. That man got what he needed. I know that threw a whole lot of word of faith stuff out the window. But God is greater than our stupidity and even our lack of faith. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible 
Oh God, help my unbelief. Okay. Oh God, help my unbelief. Okay. You see it? You reach out. And He moves further towards you than you ever could towards Him. Jesus healed. Passed it on to the church. Church, we see, read the book of Acts. Get ready. Read the book of Acts. Get ready. You know what the early church said in the book of Acts? Funny you should ask. Early church gets together and says this. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Acts chapter 4. Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. It didn't die out when Jesus left. And it didn't die out with the apostles. The apostles saw healing done by the by 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 uh, shadows of Peter, by handkerchiefs from Paul. But when the man at the gate beautiful was healed, and the people all wanted to give the glory to Peter, he said, "Why do you look on us as if?" Through our own holiness or power, we made this man to walk. It's not all about us. It's all about the name of Jesus. And faith in that name has made this man whole. Well, it all died during the apostles. You know you're going to lose that argument because Acts 29 is still being written. I watched my son, five years old, with a cast on his arm, standing right up over here, about the third row back on a Wednesday night, disappointed because he'd broke his arm on vacation. I went in with him on Monday. They put the cast on his little arm. He was disappointed. I'm not going to play basketball. I can't play basketball. Man, you know, he was going to tear it up, five years old. I saw him on a Wednesday night, right over there. Cast on his arm. And Brother Donnie got up and told the story about how Gabe blew out his knee as a senior in high school and how God healed it. I saw him lift his little arm up, begin to praise and worship the Lord and shake under the power of God. Nobody touching him, nobody saying anything to him. Hannah took him over to the doctor on Friday because they needed to check it again, maybe put a new cast on it. The doctor told us it'll be eight weeks before we're ready to, you know, put a little cast on it and then he can go. And we, we went to the hospital and a different doctor was there. He took the, the first cast off that had been on four or five days and looked at the x-ray and says, Well, it's all healed. He's ready to go. <laughs> doctor thought it had been on for eight weeks. Your son was healed of cancer. Brian, you were healed of carpal tunnel syndrome just a few weeks ago in our revival. Word of wisdom, Curtis Hutchinson gave it, said there's a, someone's been healed. We didn't know who it was. Nobody said anything. But at the end of the service, that man right there said, I'd be wrong if I didn't say God healed me. Years ago, I heard Brother Swigert say this, that there is a, and, I, and I, I was trying to remember the story, and I don't remember the circumstances like I ought to to say it to you, but I'll say it this way. He was undergoing some stress here in the ministry, of course, figure that. Under attack, all the things in the ministry, uh, rough, he went on a crusade, and was out walking and praying and troubled in his mind, troubled in his heart and troubled in his spirit. And as I was thinking this morning, this it just reminded me. And he's walking along a beach in a foreign country, and a little boy 
or maybe it was a young man, I don't remember which, but I, in my mind I thought he said it was a little boy, walked by him and all of a sudden recognized him and looked up at him and said, He still walks the waters. He still walks the waters. Have you forgotten the healing power of Jesus? He still walks on water. He still has the power. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Would you stand with me, please? Reach, Reach out, out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You will find He's not too busy. To hear your heart's cry, He's passing by this moment, your needs to supply. Oh, yes, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. Just one more time, would you sing it? Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's by this moment your needs to supply reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by they're going to continue to sing as the Lord leads them and this is what I want to do this morning and I want, I would ask this, that as we get what I'm about to say in motion, that don't leave nobody moving around. Let's not disturb what the Holy Spirit has planted in our hearts. First of all, I'm going to ask the pastors and the elders to grab those bottles of oil. And Pastor Chad, Angie, I need you up here, please, too. Brother John and Deborah, would you come, please? If you need a healing in your physical body, I want you to come. But now listen, I want you to come and stand shoulder to shoulder. Don't bunch up. Shoulder to shoulder, all the way around the aisle. Come on. Just bring your toes right to that front. That's it. Come on, up here, guys. All the way around. You need a fist. Don't bunch up. Spread out all the way through. I want to make sure everybody, we're getting people right there. Go ahead and just move down a little Move down, even if it spreads all the way out that direction. I don't care. You need a healing in your physical body. Don't get behind somebody. Stand shoulder to shoulder. Stand as much as you can. Well, we're running out of room. Just get behind the next person. Hallelujah. Look at this. Now, I need a spirit-filled believer. And we're going to have so many people here that need healing. I need a spirit-filled believer to come behind these that are asking.
for prayer. Come on, make your way in. Healing in this house. Just begin to worship. That's it. Just begin to pray. Nobody's going to be left out. Troubled hearts with healing bound. There is healing in this house. We're going to believe God today. The needs of God's people are great. There is mercy. God is great. And He still walks the water. There's healing in this house today. Not because of men, but because of a Savior, Christ Jesus, who died that you might have it. There is healing in this house. Come on, just worship Him a moment. Just lift your hands and in your heart. Say, Father, I believe. Father, I believe. Father, I believe that what Jesus did for me at Calvary is sufficient for my healing. That what God has done for me at Calvary is sufficient to heal my body. And God, if I'm struggling with unbelief, help thou mine unbelief and help me to reach out this morning. The Bible says, is there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them anoint with oil and pray in the name of the Lord. Those of you over Sun Life Radio, right where you are, God can move as we pray the prayer of faith. God can move and touch your physical body right where you are, in your office, in your home, in your car. God is able. He still walks the water. And He's coming to where you are in Jesus' name. He's coming to where you are in Jesus' name. We have so many here that are asking for the healing of the physical body. But God is able. And here's the thought process I want you to grab a hold of. I'm going to prayer what we call the prayer of faith. But I need you to pray it with me. I need you to exhibit faith. It's not my prayer. But if you'll pray it with me in your heart as I speak it. And exhibit faith toward God. I believe that Jesus told me, standing on this platform last night, that He would be here to heal you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over sickness in my body. I take authority over infirmity in my physical body. I believe that what Jesus did for me at Calvary not only saves my soul, but can heal my body. And right now, I reach out by faith and receive healing. And receive healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Pastors, lay hands on them right now. Jesus, I rebuke infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke infirmity in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed in Jesus' name. That's the power of Pentecost. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. This podcast has been a blessing to you and you would like to contribute to this ministry. Feel free to contact us at 1-800-288-8350 or you can go to our website at www.jsm.org. We love you. God bless you. Dear Savior, my